Hello, you're watching Armando Hasudungan, biology and medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group. For the latest videos, visit Facebook Armando Hasudungan, like, ask questions, answer questions, and post interesting things. So today's topic is on the basic anatomy of the heart and the veins, circulation of blood around the body, and a brief introduction to the physiology of the cardiovascular system. So back in the day, the heart was not thought to be the organ responsible for transporting blood around the body, and the cardiovascular system was still a bit of a maze. Now, it wasn't until the mid-1600s when a man by the name of William Harvey described that the heart and proved that the heart was responsible for pumping blood around the whole body. Now, the heart is located in the thoracic cavity in our chest. Let's have a closer look. The heart looks something like this, like this. Now, the circulatory system, or the cardiovascular system, can be very confusing, but it's actually quite simple. Basically, what happens is that deoxygenated blood, or blood with oxygen that has been used up by the body, will come back from down here and from up here, known as the superior and inferior vena cavas. And we will learn these names later on. But for now, let's try to understand the concept. The deoxygenated blood will come in the heart from up here and down here, from, and then enter the heart from the right side. Then it will go through the heart and will then leave the heart through these arteries into the lungs known as the pulmonary arteries because pulmonary means lungs. So why does it want to go to the lungs? So why? It's because the deoxygenated blood can then be reoxygenated because when we breathe in, we also breathe in oxygen which will then replenish our deoxygenated blood supply. So now this reoxygenated blood will then come back to the heart from, on the, from the left side and then will be pumped back out through this flute looking artery called the aorta to the whole body. So oxygenated blood will be pumped around the, blood, around the body through the aorta. Now another important concept to understand is that deoxygenated blood is denoted as the color blue and red means oxygenated, so full of useful oxygen. Typically, arteries are red and the veins are blue because arteries leave the heart with oxygen, oxygenated blood to supply the body and the veins come back to the heart with deoxygenated blood, used up oxygen. However, you might ask yourself, why is the artery leaving the heart towards the lungs blue? Well, it's because it's low in oxygen, obviously, it's deoxygenated still. Now, when we look at this heart like this, it looks like a piece of meat with just a few arteries and veins coming out of it. But if we cut a transsectional view, we can see that the heart consists of four chambers and four valves. And it is these structures that make this vital organ so magnificent. It works like a double pump, you see. Deoxygenated blood, or we can say blood containing CO2, comes from up here and down here. And will enter the first chamber, go down through the second chamber, and it will be pumped up to the pulmonary arteries towards the lungs. So that's the first pump. So it will go to the lungs, this deoxygenated de blood, still full of CO2, will go towards the lungs, and in the lungs, uh, we will typically inhale oxygen and we'll exhale CO2. So we will exhale CO2 and we'll inhale oxygen to replenish our blood, low oxygen supply in our blood. So now this reoxygenated blood supply will return back to the heart from the right uh, to the heart from the right uh, left side. It will come through this chamber, go down this chamber, and will be pumped again for the second time around the whole body through the aorta. So reoxygenated blood, this oxygenated blood will be pumped out out of the heart through the aorta to the whole body to supply the body. So I hope you understood that. Let's look at more about the anatomy now. Remember that red means oxygenated blood, and the blue is uh, means deoxygenated blood. So arteries go away from the heart also, and the veins go towards the heart. So what happens first is that let's go over the arteries and veins first, the names of the major arteries and veins. So the deoxygenated blood will come to the heart from the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava. Inferior means be uh, below and superior means above. So it will come through the heart and then it goes into the first, second chamber and then will be pumped to the lungs through the pulmonary arteries. So it will go to the lungs, the low oxygenated blood will be replenished with new oxygen and this newly oxygenated blood supply will come back through the pul to the back to the heart through the pulmonary veins. Remember, veins means coming back towards heart. 
and then this new oxygenated blood will then be pumped back out through the aorta to the whole body. Now let's learn about the chambers. So deoxygenated blood will come through the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava to the right atrium, then down to the right ventricle, pumped up through the pulmonary arteries towards the lungs. From the lungs, it will come back through the pulmonary veins back to the heart, to the left atrium, to the left ventricle, and then be pumped back up through the aorta towards the whole body. Now to separate the atrium and ventricles so that there is no much blood entering and to prevent backflow, we have valves. So here is the tricuspid valve separating the right atrium and the vent right ventricle. The tricuspid valves as in three cusps. We have the pulmonary valve separating the pulmonary artery with the left ventricle. Then we have the mitral valve or bicuspid valve separa separating the left atrium and the left ventricle. The bicuspid means two cusps. Then the aortic valve separating the aorta and the left ventricle. Um, and these valves are very important to prevent backflow and to keep pressure levels in sync and uh, pumping um, sane. Now the, and remember that the blood comes this way up here to the lungs and comes back down from the lungs and pumps to the aorta towards the whole body. Another important thing are the interventricular septum separates the two ventricles, the two pumps. And also another important thing, the white bit here is the muscle. And the left ventricle especially has a lot of muscle compared to the right, so that it can pump blood to the whole body, the head, the legs, via the aorta. Um, okay, now there's a, there are differences between the arteries and veins. An artery is, more, is much more stronger and more elastic. Why is that? Because arteries have to push all this blood out of the heart to the whole body. So let's cut a cross section of an artery from the outside. So let's cut a cross section of the artery and learn uh, the, the different layers from the outside. The artery has a tunica externa and it's a, just composed of collagen fibers. Then there's a tunica media which is composed of the external layer of elastic lamina and a very thick smooth muscle, a thick smooth muscle, because it needs to be strong to pump blood out. Now, and then there is a tunica intima, which is composed of the internal elastic lamina, and there's endothelial cells, and there's the basement membrane for diffusion purposes. So here, basement membrane and the endothelial. Uh, the veins, on the other hand, is not elastic and not as muscly. From the outside layer, it consists also of the tunica externa, which is composed of the collagen fibers. So the tunica externa can just compose of collagen fibers. Actually, it can consist of a thick collagen fiber, fiber, thick tunica interna. The tunica media bit is composed of smooth muscle and just a bit of smooth muscle, and the tunica intima, basement membrane, and endothelial cells. Um, basement membrane and endothelial cells. But most importantly, the veins also consist of valves to prevent backflow, because when you think about it, when blood is being brought back to the heart, especially from the bottom, don't you want to prevent backflow, the blood going backwards, right? So let's go over the th overall picture again. We have the pulmonary arteries containing deoxygenated blood from the heart travel to the lungs to be re-oxygenated. Oxygenated. Um, now this oxy oxygenated blood will then travel th through the pulmonary uh, veins back to the heart. The heart will then pump this newly oxy oxygenated blood around the body to body tissues via the aorta. The tissues will use oxygen and return CO2 or deoxygenated blood back to the heart and the cycle continues. Let's take a closer look at these tissues and learn about capillaries. So arteries coming, coming comes from the heart. And as it goes to tissues, such as skeletal muscle, for example, it will branch into small, small arteries known as arterioles, which will then form capillaries. Capillaries are very thin and so, and so permeable to many substances. Capillaries will give oxygen to tissues, in this case some cells or muscles, and will receive CO2 in return. It will then carry this deoxygenated blood supply to, to, to the venules, which will then form the veins. 
And it is these veins that will carry the deoxygenated blood back to the heart. Remember, veins have valves to prevent back flow. Yep, and also the difference between veins and arteries, again, let's go over it, is that the veins don't have as much small, smooth muscle. It's not as elastic as arteries, but veins have larger lumen and thicker tunica externa. So comparing the veins and arteries to capillaries, there is a vast difference. If we have a cross-section view of the capillaries, we see it is only composed of simple squamous epithelium and basement membranes. Why is that? Well, so, it easy, so, so it's easy for molecules, uh, molecular exchange between capillaries and tissues. Simple enough. So I hope that was okay, it wasn't too quick. And next we will learn about the cardiac cycle, the heart pressures and the heart volumes, etc. Uh, please comment, like, and uh, any suggestions. Thank you.